In this video, we will be discussing about the biliary apparatus. Uh, we will just have an introduction and in the following part, we will be discussing the intrahepatic part and the extrahepatic part. We will discuss the gallbladder, its parts and relations and the common bile duct parts and relations will be discussed in this video. So first start with the introduction to the biliary apparatus. So we'll just have an introduction to the biliary apparatus. So you should know that the biliary apparatus is consisting of two parts. So it consists of an intrahepatic part and an extrahepatic part. Okay. So as the name suggests, what is the intrahepatic part? Intrahepatic part is the part of the biliary apparatus which is lying inside the liver. That is, it is located inside the liver. So, it is related to the hepatocytes. Okay, this part functions to drain the bile secreted by the hepatocytes outside the liver. So, it is located inside the liver. So, what are the parts of the intrahepatic part? It consists of, first of all, it's a, you know that there are some hepatocytes here. No? The hepatocytes has got so many uh, biliary canaliculi like this so the intrahepatic part consists of a biliary canaliculi and which leads into biliary bile ductules and the bile ductules which leads into the interlobular bile ducts interlobular bile ducts so this is the intrahepatic part of the biliary apparatus it consists of the biliary canalicula which is located inside the hepatocytes and this leads into bile ductules and between the lobes you have the interlobular between the lobules you have the interlobular bile ducts now we know that uh, liver the, if this is the liver it has got the uh, right lobe and also the left lobe now the interlobular bile ducts of the right lobe of the liver so there are so many interlobular bile ducts in the right lobe so these unite to form the right hepatic duct and the interlobular bile ducts of the left lobe of the liver this unite to form the left hepatic duct okay so this is left hepatic duct and this is right hepatic duct so interlobular bile ducts of the right lobe of the liver join together to form the right hepatic duct similarly the interlobular bile duct of the left lobe of the liver unite to form the left hepatic duct so the right and left hepatic duct is the part which is lying outside the liver so it comes in the extra hepatic part so we will deal with the extra hepatic part now so first the intrahepatic part is lying inside the liver it consists of this biliary canaliculi inside the hepatocytes and which leads into bile ductules and in between the lobules you can see the interlobular uh, bile duct okay and the interlobular bile ducts of the right lobe join together to form the right hepatic duct interlobular bile ducts of the left lobe joined together to form the left hepatic duct. So these three structures forms the intrahepatic part of the biliary apparatus. Now if you go into the extrahepatic part of the biliary apparatus, it consists of, so if this is the okay, this is the duodenum, okay can see this uh, c-shaped structure now what happens you can see the right and left hepatic duct here so this is the right hepatic duct and this is the left hepatic duct so both of this join together to form the common hepatic duct so here you are having the gallbladder here so you have the gallbladder here now from the gallbladder you can see a cystic duct and the cystic duct is joining the common hepatic duct so this is a cystic duct which joins the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct 
so it passes behind the duodenum below the duodenum and enters the duodenum like this again part of the duodenum like this so this much part which is starting with the right and left hepatic duct is known as the extra hepatic part so this is the part which is lying outside the liver so which are the parts we will label it that now that is so this one is the right hepatic duct so this one was the left hepatic duct so both of this join together to form the common hepatic duct and from the gallbladder you have the uh, duct known as the cystic duct so the cystic duct is joining the common hepatic duct to form the CBD that is common bile duct so these parts like the right and left hepatic duct and uh, the common hepatic duct the gallbladder the cystic duct and the common bile duct together these form the extra hepatic part of the biliary apparatus so what is the function of this extra hepatic part it is collecting the bile from the liver and it is stored in the gallbladder and transmit it to the second part of the duodenum so bile collected from the liver is stored in the gallbladder and it is passed through the common bile duct into the duodenum as and when it is needed okay so now you will see the extra hepatic part of the biliary apparatus now we know the extra hepatic part it consists of um, right and left hepatic duct following that this right and left hepatic duct it joins with the cystic duct which is a duct of the gallbladder so gallbladder also forms a part of the extra hepatic part of the biliary apparatus from the gallbladder you have the cystic duct and the cystic duct and the right and hepatic duct left hepatic duct called sorry the right and left hepatic duct they join together to form the common hepatic duct now the common hepatic duct it joins with the cystic duct to form the common bile duct so this is actually the extra hepatic part of the biliary apparatus consisting of right and left hepatic duct gallbladder and the duct of the gallbladder is the cystic duct and right and left hepatic duct joined together to form common hepatic duct which descends downwards for a 2 cm or so and it combines with the cystic duct from the gallbladder forming the common bile duct so this is actually the extra hepatic now what about the right and left hepatic duct so from where this is emerging so we know that uh, right and left hepatic duct is emerging from the porta hepatis so if you look into the posterior and inferior aspect of the liver so we have seen that there is a part here which is known as the porta hepatis now the porta hepatis uh, shows the arrangement of some structures here that is uh, from behind forwards the arrangement is like this behind forwards arrangement is that is there is a mnemonic that is VAD that is V V stands for portal vein and A stands for branches of hepatic artery hepatic artery and D stands for hepatic duct so you should know that the right and left hepatic ducts are emerging from the porta hepatis so this is the porta hepatis so the arrangement of structures in the porta hepatis from behind forwards is VAD that is the mnemonic that is branches of portal vein, branches of hepatic artery and the right and left hepatic duct. So the right and left hepatic ducts have emerged from this ok. Now these unite together at the right end of the porta hepatis to form the common bile duct. So the right and left hepatic duct joined together so this is the right one this is the left one they join together to form the common bile duct sorry common hepatic duct CHD common hepatic duct so now what happens to the common hepatic duct it descends for a, a length of about 
2 cm before joining the cystic duct. So we have the gallbladder here and the gallbladder has got so we have the gallbladder here there is a cyst cystic duct from the gallbladder which joins with the common hepatic duct at an acute angle so after descending at about 2 cm so this is the common hepatic duct so the common hepatic lung, uh, duct is formed by the joining of the right and left hepatic duct and it is formed at the right end of the porta hepatis formed at right end of porta hepatis porta hepatis and what is the length of CHT that is 3.5 cm it is, join, it is joined by the cystic duct at an acute angle after descending about 2 cm or so to form the common bile duct so common hepatic duct it joins with the cystic duct and forms the common bile duct so that is all about the common hepatic duct so what is the function of the common hepatic duct it is carrying the bile to the cystic duct for the storage in the gallbladder so its function is to carry the bile from the right and left hepatic duct into the cystic duct for storage inside the gallbladder so that is about the common hepatic duct. Now the common hepatic duct, it joins with the cystic duct to form the common bile duct. Now we have to discuss a few words about the gallbladder. So uh, I'll discuss about the gallbladder. So it, it is, uh, shape is like this, okay. It is the shape, that is a pear shaped uh, organ. So that is the pear the organ so what is the color color is slate blue color so what is the function it is a reservoir of bile reservoir of bile so what is the approximate length length is about 7 to 10 centimeter that is the length so at its widest part what is the breadth that is 3 centimeter at its widest part so actually the peculiarity of this organ is that it is capable of considerable distension considerable distension it is easily distensible distension okay so what is the function of the gallbladder the function of the gallbladder is storage of the bile as well as concentration concentration is very important storage not only really storage is performed by the gallbladder it carries out concentration of the bile how much concentration is brought about by the gallbladder that is it carries about 10 times that is the bile is concentrated to about 10 times so the all the, it is lined by simple columnar epithelium so and this simple columnar epithelium of the gallbladder is adapted for absorption of considerable amount of water and electrolyte. so if you think about the capacity of the gallbladder it is 30 to 50 ml so if you go into the anatomy section okay so anatomy proper so this is just the introduction to the gallbladder so if you go into the anatomy first we will deal with the location of the gallbladder so in which quadrant of the abdomen this gallbladder is located so if you look into the abdominal quadrants so we have said that this many quadrants are there so it is located inside the which part the right hypochondria so the location is the right hypochondria how it is related to the liver okay so if you draw the picture of a liver showing the inferior surface and the posterior surface so this is the inferior uh, surface and posterior surface of the liver so the if you draw the so you can see the porta hepatis here so 
so this is the porta hepatis so gallbladder is extending from the right end of the porta hepatis to the inferior margin of the liver like this so gallbladder is located in the gallbladder fossa in the liver so first if you discuss about the location of the gallbladder in the liver you should know that it is located in GB fossa in liver in which aspect of the liver it is located in the inferior surface of the liver so in the inferior surface of the liver it is located in the gallbladder fossa what is the extent it is it is located in which lobe right lobe okay right lobe and it is extending from the right end of the porta hepatis towards the inferior margin of the liver extending from right end of porta hepatis to the inferior margin of liver So that is the anatomical location of the gallbladder. So if you see quadrant wise, it is located in the right hypochondrium. If you see the position of the gallbladder inside the liver, it is located in the gallbladder fossa on the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver, extending from the right end of the porta hepatis to the inferior margin of the liver. Okay. So now we are going to discuss about the parts of the gallbladder. Having discussed about the anatomical location, discuss the parts. So we should know that it consists of three parts. That is the fundus, sorry, fundus, the body and neck of the gallbladder. So if you draw the structure of the liver like this. So this is the anterior aspect of the liver. So when you see the anterior aspect, we can see a gallbladder part which is projecting like this so this part of the gallbladder which is projecting beyond the inferior margin of the liver so this is the part of the gallbladder which is projecting beyond the inferior margin of the liver anteriorly this is known as the fundus so this is the fundus so fundus is the part which is projecting uh, beyond the inferior margin of the liver so we can see that it is related anteriorly to the anterior abdominal wall so anteriorly it is related to anterior abdominal wall so the surface marking of the fundus of the gallbladder is very important from the surgical point of view so in surgery aspect uh, when you meet a patient with an acute cholecystitis you will be asked to elicit a sign which is known as the Murphy sign. To elicit this sign, you should know about the um, surface marking of the gallbladder. Because, which, which is the surface marking of the gallbladder. So, gallbladder is located, it is corresponding to the tip of the right ninth costal cartilage. So, that is the surface marking of the, sorry, fundus of the gallbladder. Surface marking of fundus is located at the tip of right ninth costal cartilage costal cartilage so and this is the point of intersection of the right linear semi lunaris and the transpyloric pain transpyloric pain so what is the surface marking? It is corresponding to the tip of the right ninth costal cartilage. The point of intersection of right linear semi lunaris and the trans pyloric pain. So why the, well, knowing the surface marking is important? Because when you see a patient with acute cholecystitis, you have to elicit the sign which is known as the Murphy's sign. This sign is related to acute cholecystitis. Okay. So, uh, in this sign, if you are applying pressure on the tip of the right ninth costal cartilage of the patient, with the patient in sitting position while taking deep breath, it gives sharp pain in a patient with cholecystitis. That is applying pressure at the region of right tip of right ninth costal cartilage 
and in a patient with cholecystitis in sitting position and when taking deep breath gives sharp pain so that is known as the murphy sign which is seen in cholecystitis so that is the clinical importance now if you see the fundus now the body so if you want to see the body of the gallbladder we will look into which aspect of the liver so this is the uh, inferior aspect of the liver we have seen that so this is the porta hepatis this is the inferior surface of the liver and if you see the inferior surface of the liver there is a gallbladder fossa okay in which the gallbladder is located like this so the body of the gallbladder is located in the gallbladder fossa gallbladder fossa on the inferior surface in the right lobe of liver so okay so and it is continuing as the neck it continues at the, as the neck near the right end of the porta hepatis so uh, the relation of the body of the gallbladder is also important from the clinical point of view so for discussing the uh, relation you should see that this is the right lobe of liver and you are able to see the right and left hepatic duct joined to form the common hepatic duct it is joined by the cystic duct so you can see the gallbladder here like this this is the body of the gallbladder so and two important structures are related here so you can see that this is the superior surface so this is the superior surface of the body of the gallbladder this is the inferior surface so the superior surface is related to the liver that is its superior surface is in contact with the liver and the inferior surface is related to the first it is related to the transverse colon okay like this and also to the first and the second parts of the duodenum like this so the inferior surface is related to the this is transverse colon and this is the first part of duodenum and this is the second part of duodenum so these are the relations of the body of the gallbladder so why this is clinically important this relationship is very important because so when there is a stone in the gallbladder so it can ulcerate through the wall of the gallbladder into the duodenum or the transverse colon that is the importance that the stone in the gallbladder can ulcerate through the gallbladder wall into the walls of the duodenum and also the transverse colon that is the clinical importance now we'll go into the neck of the gallbladder so the next part is the neck of the gallbladder so we have the fundus of the gallbladder which is leading into the body and the body continues upwards the as the neck of the gallbladder first it turns upwards and forwards then it turns abruptly backwards and downwards to become the cystic duct like this so this is the neck of the gallbladder first is first it is turning upwards okay and forwards then abruptly it turns backwards and downwards to form the cystic duct so this is the neck of the gallbladder so the neck of the gallbladder it is the narrow part of the gallbladder narrow part of the gallbladder it is the continuation of the body of the gallbladder so first direction is upwards and forwards then it turns abruptly backwards and downwards and forms the cystic duct so it, its inferior relation is very important inferiorly it is related to which part it is related to the first part of duodenum 
so inferior relation of the neck is inferior relation is formed by first part of diurna this is the first part of diurna so inferior relation is formed by first part of diurna so what is the clinical importance clinical importance clinical significance is that we will tell it later first uh, you should know that uh, the neck of the gallbladder has got um, small projections from its right side which is known as the hartmann's pouch or infundibular okay so the neck of the gallbladder has got a small pouch from its right side and this small pouch is known as the hartmann's pouch or infundibulum so uh, the stones can get dots in the pouch and it causes adhesions with the duodenum and perforation so as you know that the first part of the duodenum is an in inferior is an inferior relation to the neck of the gallbladder stones which are lodged in the hartmann's pouch of the neck of the gallbladder can um, cause adhesions with the duodenum and cause perforation so stones lodged in the hartmann's pouch in this pouch can cause adhesions with the duodenum and cause perforation perforation so that is the clinical importance now if you discuss the peritoneal relations of the gallbladder that is peritoneal relation you should know that the gallbladder has got um, so to discuss the peritoneal relation first you should see the fundus superior surface inferior surface okay so first you will see the fundus of the gallbladder so the fundus is completely covered with the peritoneum this plus completely covered with peritoneum and the superior surface we have just seen that the superior surface is non peritoneal it is non peritoneal and it is connected to the inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver by the connective tissue and the inferior surface it is co covered with the peritoneum so the fundus and inferior surface of the gallbladder is covered with the peritoneum while the superior surface is non peritoneal so that is the peritoneal relation now one more part of the extrahepatic so so another part is the cystic duct so the now the next part of the extrahepatic biliary apparatus is the cystic duct so this is the gallbladder consisting of the fundus body and the neck the neck leads into the uh, cystic duct like this so it is actually a shaped okay and what is the length length is 3 to 4 cm so it is beginning in the neck of the gallbladder it passes downwards okay and to the left and it joins with the common hepatic duct it joins with the common hepatic duct and forms the common bile duct so this is common hepatic duct this is a cystic duct so what is the shape and if the shape is s shaped and it is 3 to 4 cm in length and it begins in the neck of the gallbladder and the direction is backwards and downwards so it goes to the left at then it joins common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct so its lumen is showing 
so if you look at the lumen the lumen of the cystic duct shows mucus folds and this mucus fold will be forming spiral valve just like the neck of the gallbladder it is also the lumen is showing spiral valve so actually the function is it is acting as the two way passage so two way passage means what does it do so it is carrying the bile from the common hepatic duct into the gallbladder for storage and concentration so bile from common hepatic duct into carries bile from common hepatic duct into gallbladder so that is one function the function is that uh, this bile from and it also carries out bile from gallbladder into the common bile duct so it is acting at say two way passage so that is about the cystic duct now about the common bile duct which is known as the bile duct we will be discussing yeah. so uh, we are discussing about the common bile duct it is known as the bile duct so what is the length of the common bile duct that is very important length is 7 to 7.5 to 8 cm in length and its diameter is usually less than 6 to 7 mm so how it is formed we have discussed it that now so we have the gall bladder leading into the cystic duct and the right and left to hepatic ducts are joined together to form the common hepatic duct which the cystic duct is joining the common hepatic duct to form the common hepatic duct now there this is a common hepatic duct so which are the parts here this is the fundus gall bladder this is body of gall bladder this is the neck of gall bladder this is the cystic duct this is right and left hepatic duct joined together to form common hepatic duct common hepatic duct joins with the cystic duct to form the cbd so we are discussing about the cbd it is also known as the bile duct so it descends in the free margin of the lesser omentum and then passes behind the first part of the duodenum so it is like this it passes downwards like this and it bit uh, first descends behind the first part of the duodenum like this okay then it enters the second part of the duodenum or the second part of the duodenum so we can see three parts here in relation to the duodenum one part which is located above the duodenum is known as the supra duodenal part so one which is located behind the duodenum is known as the retroduodenal part and one which is located below the duodenum is known as the infraduodenal part infraduodenal part and one which is located inside the wall of the duodenum second part of duodenum it is the intramural part actually so it is the narrowest part intramural part is located within the wall of the second part of the duodenum so these are the parts of the common bile duct in relation to the uh, first part of duodenum that is supra duodenal part there is a retro duodenal part behind the first part of duodenum below that you have the infra duodenal part and there is the intramural part so we will discuss about each of this parts now so first uh, we will discuss about the supra duodenal part so the supra uh, duodenal part it is lying in the free margin of the lesser omentum 
and it is related to some structures here so two important structures here one is the hepatic artery proper and also to the portal vein so we are having the right hepatic artery here that is, this is the hepa right hepatic artery and also the portal vein is lying here posterior to the common pile duct in this region so just posterior to that it is lying that is the portal vein so the relation of the supraduodenal part is what is the relation posteriorly there is a relation and towards the left end you have a relation so posteriorly the supraduodenal part is related to which structure it is the portal vein and you have towards the left side you have the hepatic artery proper hepatic artery proper proper hepatic artery is lying towards the left side so that is the relation so this is the uh, hepatic artery proper now if you go down uh, that is there is a retroduodenal part so what is the relation of the retroduodenal part here also the posterior relation is the portal vein itself posteriorly you have the portal vein on the left side instead of the proper hepatic artery you have the gastroduodenal artery here so gastroduodenal artery so this was the gastroduodenal artery on the left side and so what is the relation of the retroduodenal part anteriorly you have so we know that the retroduodenal part is lying posterior to the first part of duodenum so anterior relation of retroduodenal part is formed by first part of duodenum what is the posterior relation still it is the portal vein portal vein forms the posterior relation here also and towards the left side instead of hepatic artery you have another artery that is gastroduodenal artery now the like next part is the intraduodenal part infra duodenal part so in the infra duodenal part you have another structure here that is the head of the pancreas which is lying anteriorly here head of the pancreas okay so and posteriorly you have an important vein here that is the ivc here in feeder vena cava that is lying posterior to the infra duodenal part of the common bile duct so what are the relations of the this part infradural part anteriorly so common bile duct in this region it is lying posterior to the head of the pancreas so anterior relation is formed by head of pancreas posteriorly you are having the inferior vena cava that is ivc and towards the right side you have the second part of duodenum this is the second part of duodenum second part of duodenum so these are the relations and now the intramural part if you think about the intramural part a few words about the intramural part it is the narrowest part and it is lying inside the wall of second part of duodenum so here the bile duct is in close relation to the pancreatic duct so now the bile duct and the pancreatic duct join together to form the hepato pancreatic ampulla it forms the hepato pancreatic ampulla in the wall of the duodenum very close to the summit of the major duodenal papilla and this 
ampulla is guarded by the spinster of Odi. So that is about the relations of the uh, different parts of the common bile duct or the bile duct. So that is about the biliary apparatus. Thank you for watching this video. To see more videos on my channel, please subscribe the channel. Thank you.